Stellenbosch based investment group, PSG, was founded by Yanni Mouton and it has a market cap of 11.8 billion rand. PSG's main investments are 32.5% stake in Capitec, wholly owned uh, PSG Financial Services, a 63% stake in private schools company Caro and a 42% stake in agricultural investor Zida. PSG has a price to earnings ratio of 14. Okay, so let's start with the gem in PSG's staple, that stake in Capitec, just looking at their full year mm. earnings which were released this year recently, a loan revenue up by almost 50% to, what, 5.7 billion rand. Uh, Capitec really has been performing fantastically. We've seen that in the share price. Uh, what are your thoughts on the sustainability of those earnings? You know, I, I like the idea of Capitec because, you know, they were first to market in their space, really. I mean, they went in where not a lot of, a lot of big players didn't think they could make money, and they did, and they've proved it you know, time and time again they're doing well. You know, for me, I don't think it's going to grow exponentially forever, and I don't think they're going to have massive growth going forward. But their earnings are definitely strong. And, I, you know, it's, it's one of those holdings that the only risk, the, the biggest risk I see to it is the unse you know, unsecured lending. And there's been a lot of talk about that lately. And if you have an issue there, yes, then, you know, they, they're quite, quite exposed on that side. But I think, you know, they, 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 their management team is actually focusing on building you know, they're trying to attract higher net worth clients. I don't know if they're going for, you know, Mr. Maton and Mr. Visa and all of this, but they are definitely trying to get a higher income client base. And I like what they've done so far. The original they're opening up 55 new branches this year. And as you yeah. say, they're targeting middle income consumers, which is an interesting change in their strategy. Uh, Paul, you know, Yanni Mouton, what the Buffett of South Africa, I'm currently reading his book and then they find me. He's a clever man. and He's made uh, a lot of money. Uh, PSG has been a fantastic uh, company for him. Uh, your thoughts on PSG as it's evolved? Look, he doesn't sing as well as Warren Buffett. That I can tell you. <laughs> I've had a couple of meetings with Yanni in my time um, and he is. He's got a phlegmatic uh, way about him. He's got excellent exit discipline. And he's also got a great nose for an opportunity. So PSG has been a spectacular success, and it's been so because of Capitec. Of course, you can invest in Capitec directly. The other investments that they have out there are Curro, as you mentioned, which you can also invest in directly, and Zida, which you can also buy, although I don't like that one because of the fee structure that we've mentioned on previous shows. The only thing you can't buy on the market is the PSG asset management business, which is the old PSG online mixed with the PSG consult business and an asset management and a private equity business. The problem with buying PSG here is that you're really buying into a family company. Um, you know, the Mouton family plus Chris Otto and his mates, Michiel Leroux, they all control it, right, out of their office in PSG in Stellenbosch and they go to work in shorts. The Stellenbosch mafia. And when they, they needed it. a new CEO yeah. because, you know, Yanni was getting tired of working so hard, he looked around the entire length and breadth of the country and decided <laughs> the best person for the job was his son. <laughs> okay? What a surprise. So at this level, 58 Rand 30, it's riding on the Capitec rocket ship. But again, I don't think I would invest big money here. I don't, what about the PSG Africa division? Because that is now a strategic decision where they've, they've made two investments there. They bought into Chaitan Africa, which is uh, in, Zim, in Zambia, which is considered to be the bread basket of Africa. That's an agricultural asset. They've also bought another stake in, in an African entity. And that is a space that they want to, to grow in, in, in agriculture, in education, and in, um, in financial services in Africa. Yeah, you know, I mean, the uh, expanding into Africa, that's great. It's, it's amazing. I, I like it. But I, I can't shake what Paul said. I'm, I'm really very much with him on the family business aspect of all of this. And, you know, for me, they're doing it, but is it really a massive part of their business? You know, is it going to be a huge contributing factor? I think, you know, other things, to me, there, were, there would be more important things that I'd look at, you know, in right terms of now, PSG. But what if you're a long-term investor? Well, if you're a long-term investor, I mean, there's still, you know, a lot of ifs and buts. I mean, if it works out spectacularly well, that's the first step. And, you know, how is that going to happen? What is the, what is the exact route there? And I, I think it's a bit early. You know, I, I, always, I always say the same sort of thing. I mean, when guys talk about going into Africa and everyone's going to do it and it's amazing. You know, in, in my experience, I've been involved in brokerages that have, you know, tried to work up in Africa. And there are certain, there are a lot of challenges in dealing through, you know, in dealing up in Africa and that sort of thing. And a lot of the way these guys do business, when you think of the way they take over companies and they get into things and, you know, sort of private equity style transactions that would happen and that sort of thing, it becomes quite difficult to do. So I think for me, it's not 
you know, in future, yes, if they get it right, it's amazing. But it's not something I'm looking at right now. If you bought the share price on the 1st of January at the beginning of the year, you'd have made a 23.5% return <clears throat> as of today. Would you be buying the stock tomorrow? Is it hot or not? On Monday, I mean. Look, they've got now a reputation as being proper rainmakers. So people take deals to them. The Caro guys took this business to them. Uh, there are all sorts of people that bang on their door now uh, every week. So they will see deal flow and you could probably go along for the ride but understand that it could be a bumpy one because if they have one or two you know corporate disasters in the next five or ten years as they go down this road their reputation could take a dent so i think it's possibly something to be invested in and particularly if you're very interested in some of the early stage assets that they report in some of their annual reports so I'll give it a qualified hot, notwithstanding all the other the rude caveat, comments I made. Yeah. <laughs> hot or not for you, Claude? Mm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm lukewarm, which I think comes back to pretty much how Paul said it. I, I don't think they're a bad company. I think it's something great. You know, probably going to do great things. But I, I don't know if it's exactly where I'm going right now with my money on Monday morning. So you've got to pick hot morning. or not. Unfortunately, we can't sit on the okay, fence. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to go. Oh, I'm oh go not. Jeepers, it's tough. Not. 